So Dell has updated their 25 inch 360 Hertz monitor. It does have twice as fast as the response time as the previous one. The previous one was one millisecond. This one is 0.5 milliseconds, but quite honestly, that doesn't really make that big of a difference. But there are some pretty notable changes that I do think it is worth paying attention to. And it is only about $450 and for a 360 Hertz IPS monitor with really good color accuracy. I think that this is a pretty good deal depending on what you're looking for. But jumping right into the AW2523HF, Dell always impresses with their external build quality of their monitors and Alienware is no different. They have the easiest to access USB ports and you do have a total of four of them, two that are hitting away with the rest of the ports and two that are very easily accessible at the bottom of the monitor. I truly do not understand how other monitor companies have not gotten this through their heads, but if you're going to include a USB hub, make it at least partially accessible accessible because this to me is just something that should be a really easy task that no one else really seems to do at all. You also do have a DisplayPort 1.4 port and two HDMI 2.0 ports, no 2.1, but this is only a 1080p monitor, so you shouldn't really be too worried about the HDMI 2.1 or lack thereof. This monitor is also VESA mount compatible as well, and it does feature a significantly smaller, more compact base that is very nice to use, especially if you want to get a little bit closer to your monitor. Previous Alienware stands were not nearly as compact as this one. So I'm glad that they did go ahead and change that because the previous stands were absolutely massive. And another nifty thing that Dell is really pushing for this monitor is the fact that it now has a built-in headset hanger, which is uh, right here. And it's pretty nice to use. I would definitely say that it is kind of a welcome change because I have recently purchased some headset hangers just to put on my desk. And I guess having it built into your your monitor is actually pretty handy, very accessible and quick to grab when you're ready for a gaming session. Moving on from the build quality of the monitor, this is a 25 inch 360 hertz IPS panel that actually does get surprisingly bright. In my testing, it was able to get a little bit over 440 nits at its widest point. And don't get me wrong, this is not gonna be like some crazy HDR experience. I was just very surprised at how bright this monitor ended up getting. And you can definitely use it at maximum brightness, but again, if you're using it in a dark room, you know, you'll probably wanna turn it down a little bit. And this monitor definitely shines around like that 60 to 70% brightness mark. That's where I think that it personally looks the best. So that's where I would hang around if I were you as well. As far as the color performance of this monitor, I did measure in at 96% of sRGB, 79% of P3 gamut coverage, and with an average Delta E of about 2.5, which is pretty good as far as factory calibration is concerned for a gaming focused monitor. And even though it is gaming focused, you can use it a little bit for some content creation work. I would definitely say like, if you're gonna make gaming videos and things like that, this would be a great monitor to use. But if you are doing professional color work, I would definitely recommend picking up something else instead or in addition to this monitor. As far as the motion blur performance, I definitely would recommend using the super fast mode, which is going to be the middle preset. And that is going to give you decently clear motion blur performance, but it's not going to be anything that is going to be comparable to QD OLED or TM panels with, you know, backlight insertion technology, or really even IPS panels with backlight insertion technology. And that's going to bring me to one of my first complaints with most of the new Dell monitors that are coming out, if not all of them. But other than the QD OLED simply not needing a black frame insertion mode, I'm very confused as why for years now at this point, how come most Dell and Alienware monitor products have not come with black frame insertion technology? Like it's such a huge advantage that I'm taking a look at another monitor right now, a BenQ monitor. While the standard mode without black frame insertion would have very comparable results, using that black frame insertion drastically increases clarity. And I'm surprised that Dell has just not adopted that into the panels that they use for these monitors. And if these are supposed to be, you know, mid-range to higher end gaming monitors, how come a simple feature like that for this point, years on end has not been a feature. Like I definitely think that we deserve to see these kinds of features on these monitors, especially, you know, getting over $400 for essentially a 1080p monitor when we have, you know, these crazy graphics cards and things like that out right now. And I know that this is supposed to be more geared toward competitive use. I'm pretty sure the competitive players would like to see black frame insertion. So for the next round of releases for both the 25 inch 360 Hertz and above monitors, and also the 27 inch 240 Hertz and above monitors, I would love to see IPS panels featuring black frame insertion technology and capability in those products. Or if you're not gonna have black frame insertion, make it OLED, join them or you beat them. One of the two, it's time to start including the features or 
you have to straight up beat them with better performance. The OLED is probably gonna be really expensive though. So I highly suggest you, you just add the black frame insertion and then come out with a higher end monitor that also happens to be OLED. Thanks. Because in my opinion, at the moment, I would rather go for the ASUS PG259QN, which is the 360 hertz monitor from, I believe, either last year or almost two years ago. And as soon as you turn on the black frame insertion mode, it is a night and day difference. That PG25 is a lot clearer, even though it only locks it to 240 hertz, because that is a big thing. But the Alienware doesn't even have it to lock it at 240 hertz, even. So if it's not worth it for you to use it in a game that will hit 360 hertz, then with the ASUS, the 240 would do you just fine with significantly improved clarity. Now this monitor does feature a console mode that optimizes the display for use at 60 hertz, but um, console games nowadays are going over 60 FPS. So I don't really know how useful that is going to be for most people, especially because now even a lot of story games, they're going to have, you know, an ultra smooth 120 fps mode that will give you a much better experience so i really do think that it should optimize it for up to 120 hertz or fps for console use because now they're a lot more capable than they used to be last thing that i want to talk about is going to be these optimized gaming experiences that dell is promoting featuring the modes like night vision clear vision chroma vision and the crosshair and the only one that i found really to be useful crosshair because the other modes i just found to be too distracting and the reason why i say that is because the one that i would rather use on this monitor is going to be the clear vision as opposed to the night or the chroma vision the problem is you just have like this little square that's like right here in the middle of your screen and it is just really, really annoying and distracting to see that you have this perfect rectangle going on in the middle of your monitor and everything else on the outside of that, quite frankly, is not that clear. And then everything inside of there is ultra crisp. And you can tell that they definitely are cranking up the sharpness and things like that in that one portion of the monitor. And even some games are now featuring some techniques that will add this effect just to the game itself. But if we're gonna include something like that on the monitor, why don't you have it so that you can adjust the region of the effect on the screen where I can either make it, you know, this small, uh, let's just say 25%. How come I can't make it up to 100% of the monitor? That way I don't have this rectangle and the separation in quality distracting me from gameplay. So yeah, for $440, this thing needs a little bit of work. I definitely do love the improved design and I'm glad that they are listening to feedback and a lot of people complain about having those monstrous stands on these Alienware monitors, especially the smaller ones like this one. The rest of the monitor, I don't really think is up to 2022 going into 2023 standards. We need a couple more features and we really need black frame insertion to really make it more competitive with the current offerings that are out there. Because realistically speaking, for a couple hundred dollars more, you can get a Zowie TN panel with Diac Plus that's gonna give you significantly better clarity, even though it's gonna have drastically worse color performance. If you're looking for a really good gaming monitor, then this would have to be a little bit more competitive in my opinion. It's good, but I wouldn't say that it's great. And if you're spending nearly $500, I would definitely say that you wanna pick up a great monitor.